Hey everyone, welcome to today's video about Rancher. Uh, why Rancher is cool. Uh, we'll also go through a hands-on demo. Uh, we'll do a installation of a Kubernetes cluster. We'll walk through installing Cert Manager with Let's Encrypt to secure our Rancher installation. Uh, and then we'll deploy Rancher on top of that. So uh, why Rancher? Rancher is a complete software stack for teams that are adopting containers. It addresses multiple operation and security challenges. Um, it makes it very easy to manage Kubernetes clusters. So in today's video, we'll do a very basic installation. Um, this is not a production ready uh, install. Uh, if you guys are interested in learning about how to make this highly available, uh, more production grade ready, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I do plan on putting out a video if there is enough interest. So go ahead, like, subscribe, comment, and let me know if this is something that you would be interested in seeing. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing that we'll need is a Linux virtual machine. For this demo today, I'm just going to be using Linode. I'm not sponsored by them. It's just a virtual machine. It's very easy to set up. Uh, so we'll go ahead and launch a installation of the virtual machine within the Linode cloud. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use the command line. I'm going to create a virtual machine using the node G6 dedicated 16. Uh, of course, you can see the password on the screen here. I'm going to shut this uh, virtual machine down as soon as I'm done with this demo, so it's okay that you see that. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and kick this provisioning off, and then we can talk a little bit about the documentation. So I'll leave a link to this gist in the video description below, but I've gone through and documented all the steps that we'll take today. So if we take a quick look, uh, there's some pre-requirements or prerequisites that are required. We do need a domain name. You need the ability to make changes to that domain name. In this example, we're using a Debian 11 virtual machine, but really any Linux machine, Ubuntu, etc., should work just fine. Uh, there is some requirements that we allow both port 80 and 443 to be accessible. This is required for Let's Encrypt uh, to verify and issue a certificate. We'll go through identifying what our IP address is. Uh, we'll then head over to our DNS provider and make sure that we map the domain to the IP that's been provisioned. Uh, we'll go ahead and install some prerequisites. We'll go through installation of items such as Helm, kubectl, before we finally go ahead and deploy a Rancher cluster. Once we have the Rancher cluster installed, we'll go through and install Cert Manager. We'll install Rancher on top of that. And then finally, we should be able to access the Rancher user interface uh, protected with a SSL certificate that is mapped to our domain. Okay, so our Linux machine has been provisioned. Let's go ahead and find its IP address. Okay, so we can see here the IP address. So we can SSH into this machine. And I'll go ahead and open up a second terminal so we can watch as some of the installation happens um, as we progress here. So okay, great. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is get the IP address if you don't already know it. Uh, in our case, uh, we were able to list that um, using the AW, uh, sorry, the Linode CLI. But if you don't know what your IP address is, there's a very simple curl command that will help identify that. So if we type this in to our terminal, we can see that our IP address is returned. So the first thing that we wanna do is we want to map this IP address to the domain name that we want to use for our Rancher UI. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. In my case, I'm using Cloudflare and the URL is going to be rancher.dman.cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the IP address in there and that'll take just a quick second for it to propagate. So while we give that a second, let's uh, scroll down in the documentation. Uh, we now want to make sure that that DNS has taken effect. So depending on your service provider, this could take a couple of minutes. Um, it could take a couple of hours. So you just have to be patient to make sure that the DNS record has been published before you proceed on to the next steps. So let's take a look and see if ours has been updated. Uh, and you can very quickly check. And I do suggest that you do this from the virtual machine itself. So this way, we can ensure that when Let's Encrypt tries to issue the certificate, um, it's able to resolve that 
DNS record appropriately. So in our case, we're going to go ahead and run a dig and we picked rancher.dman.cloud. And you can see here that the IP address uh, returned matches um, the one for this virtual machine. So we are in good shape. Let's clear the screen and move on to the next steps. So the first thing that I recommend that you do, and this is not a, uh, an absolutely necessary step, but uh, it's always good practice to uh, update your packages to the latest versions. So we can copy this update and upgrade command. This should just take a couple of seconds. So we can see it's going through, it's found some updates, um, mainly related to security. So if we give this a second, it'll return with all those updates installed. And while that's happening, uh, we can go ahead and get ready with the uh, the next thing that we're gonna do. So there's some prerequisite uh, packages that need to be installed. So things like the CA certificates, um, the APT transport, HTTPS client, IP tables, etc. So if we go ahead and copy this entire block, we can get these prerequisites installed as well. Okay, great. So now that we have all the prerequisites installed, we want to uh, install Helm. Helm is the package manager or the chart manager that we'll be using to install uh, Helm today. So uh, there's a lot more documentation. Um, I've got a set of commands here that'll help you quickly get it installed. But if you would like to follow along, you can take a look at the Helm guides. They're actually quite detailed. Uh, there's lots of different ways that Helm can be installed. In our example, we're going to use um, uh, the, the package manager that comes specifically for Debian. But if you're on a different type of Linux machine or you're on Windows, uh, there's lots of different options that you can follow along with on their website. So let's go ahead. The first thing that we want to do is run this command here. So this will install the appropriate uh, key rings. We then need to go ahead and install the apt transport HTTP client. So I've included this in the re uh, prerequisites above. So in this case, um, it doesn't need to upgrade or install it again. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is add the Debian repository. So let's add that. And then we'll update our sources. And then finally, we can install Helm. And that's it. So if we run Helm version, you can see that Helm version 3.10.1 has been installed. Okay, so the next tool that we need to install is kubectl or kubectl, depending on how you would like to pronounce it. I've left a link here that talks um, a lot more about various ways that you can install it, just like we did with Helm. There's a variety of different installation methods uh, that you could take. So there's a single binary that can be installed via a curl command. There's also package managers. Uh, in our example, we're going to use the, uh, the Debian packages to get kubectl installed. So again, to make things easier, I'm just going to copy this entire block. This will install the required keychain. It'll install the repository URL. It'll update the repos. And then finally, it's going to go ahead and install our kubectl package. Okay, so that was very quick and we can issue a kubectl version and we can see that kubectl has been installed. So here we'll see the client version, but there'll be no server connection because we don't have a RKE cluster installed yet, but you'll see in a second, um, as soon as we install that, that uh, the version of the RKE cluster will become available as well. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. Uh, the next section is all about installing RKE. So in today's video, uh, we're not gonna get into the specifics and the various configurations to install RKE. This is just gonna be a quick demo. So it'll be a single node cluster. Um, this will have uh, no high availability. As I mentioned before, it's not production grade, uh, but if you're interested in seeing a highly available production grade setup for RKE, Please subscribe because I uh, do plan on releasing that here in the next few weeks. Okay, um, there's very detailed documentation if you would like to uh, follow along uh, through the RKE guides. 
they talk about various uh, ways that you can install this, um, how to install in a highly available configuration, um, if you want to enable FIPS 140-2 compliance, etc. But again, for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to do a single uh, node installation. So we've already uh, signed in as root, so there's no uh, need for us to execute the sudo command here. We'll just simply run this curl command to fetch the RKE installation scripts. So this will take a few seconds, depending on the speed of your internet connection. It'll download the tarball and it will unpack it into user local. The next thing that we need to do is enable the RKE service. And then we will want to go ahead and start the RKE server itself. Now this could take a little bit of time. It depends on the size of the virtual machine that you have configured. In this case, um, I'm running a pretty uh, big virtual machine. It's got 16 CPUs and 32 gigs of RAM, but that's just what I chose for this demo. Uh, you can install RKE on something as small as uh, two CPUs and, and four gigs of RAM and it would run just fine. So if we wait for just a few seconds here, this will go ahead and start up all the services that are required. Uh, if we want to go ahead and follow along, we can actually run this journal CTL command. So in this secondary window that I had opened earlier, we can see uh, RKE as it comes online. And you can see here that it's returned uh, back to the, the shell prompt. There'll still be a few services that um, are starting up. Um, but the first thing that we need to do is we need to get a copy of our kubeconfig so that kubectl knows um, where the Rancher cluster is located. So we'll create a .cube folder um, and then we'll copy the actual kubeconfig which uh, by default gets installed into etc rancher rke2 and then the config file itself is called rke2.yaml. And we're gonna copy this into our newly created folder uh, with the file name of config. Uh, the next couple of steps are really just about changing the ownership of that file and then some permissions so we don't get the warnings uh, that, Cube, uh, that kubectl uh, would like to issue. So let's go ahead and copy these next two lines. And then finally, we can take a look to see if we can connect to our cluster. So great, we can see that the cluster is up and running. It looks like all the services have come online. Uh, they're all in running state. So we now have a cluster that we can go ahead and install Cert Manager on. So what I like to do is I like to run a watch command just to watch all the pods as they're coming online as we go through our installation. So if I take the command that we ran previously and just uh, prepend that with watch, we can keep an eye on all the pods as they spin up. We'll make a little bit more room here so we can see all the different services. So heading back over to the gist, um, again, I've left uh, a link to the cert manager documentation. Uh, the cert manager documentation goes through again a variety of different installation methods you can install it via a kubectl apply you can install it via helm uh, there's also lots of flexible options about uh, whether you want to include the crds as part of the installation or if you would like to handle those separately in our case we're just going to go ahead and use uh, helm to do the installation so the first thing that we need to do is we need to add the repository so We'll do that, and then we will update the repo. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and install Cert Manager. So here we're going to install Cert Manager. Uh, this is the chart. We're going to uh, install it into the Cert Manager namespace. And if that namespace doesn't exist, uh, we're telling Helm to go ahead and create that namespace. And in this case, we're just going to go ahead and install the CRDs as part of our installation. So this should just take a few moments. You can see that um, the cert manager installation is already kicked off and there we go. It's quite quick. Uh, we can see that there were three different pods that came online, cert manager, the cert manager CA injector, as well as a startup API check. And everything is now up and running and online.
which means that we now have a fully functional cert manager. Okay, so the final step is to install Rancher. Um, again, this is going to install via Helm. We're gonna pass it some parameters that'll tell it what password we would like to use. We're gonna also tell it which uh, domain we would like that certificate to be created for. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and access the Rancher UR uh, I or URL. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create the namespace where Rancher will be installed into, uh, which is cattle system. So we'll do a cube CTL create namespace. We'll add the Rancher Helm chart and we're selecting Rancher latest. Again, if you follow the documentation, there's different release branches that you could install against. If you wanted just the stable version, you could uh, install Rancher stable. In our case, we'll use the, uh, the latest branch. And then we need to update our Helm repositories. And then the next step is to actually do the installation. So here we're um, gonna make a couple of changes and I'll cover uh, what we're doing here in just a second. So the first thing that we need to change is the email address that is going to be used uh, for Let's Encrypt. So this is to notify you if the certificate is about to expire and if any action is uh, needed. So in our case, we're gonna give it an email address. Uh, we are telling it that we're gonna use Let's Encrypt as the source for TLS. Uh, our bootstrap password, so this will be the default password to sign into the console. Uh, and we're gonna leave this as password again. I'm gonna bring this down as soon as I'm done with this demo. So uh, it's okay that you see this password. Um, and then the host name. So this is the host name that you mapped the IP address to um, earlier on. So in our case, that was rancher.eman.cloud. And the rest of it can remain the same. So we're telling it to install Rancher, the latest branch, and we're gonna install into the cattle system namespace. So this will take a few minutes, um, but we can monitor all those pods as they're coming online. Uh, you can also follow along uh, and watch the rollout status. So I've left this command in the gist that you can copy and paste. So if we type that in here, we'll be able to see as the, uh, the replicas become available. So you can see it's done its initial um, pods, uh, being created, they're coming online. There are a few more things that'll need to happen. It'll install, it'll check the um, the certificate uh, is mapped appropriately to the DNS. And then once those pods all come online, we'll be able to take a look. So I'll go ahead and pause this video here for a second. Um, this will take maybe two to three minutes and I'll come back uh, as soon as the installation completes. Okay. Everything is up and running and we can see that all the pods are in running or completed state. So now we should be able to hit the Rancher URL uh, through the web browser. So we go to HTTPS, rancher.demand.cloud. There we go. We can see that Rancher is up and accessible. So for the, the first screen, it'll give you the, the welcome message. Uh, if you didn't, uh, specify a password during the installation, there's a command here that'll allow you to fetch that secret that is stored in a, a secret uh, within the Kubernetes cluster. But since we know what the password is, we'll just go ahead and enter it. In our case, it was password. Um, we're not gonna save that password. And then we can agree to the terms of conditions and sign in. And finally, we can see that we're logged into the Rancher dashboard. It does have a single cluster identified. This is the cluster where Rancher is installed, the RKA2 cluster that we uh, had provisioned to install this. Um, and then from here, there's uh, the ability for you to manage uh, existing clusters. You can create new clusters directly from this user interface. Uh, we're not gonna get into um, that part of the actual uh, the video in, in the video today, uh, but if that's something you're interested in, please let me know and, I, and I'll be happy to create some additional videos. Uh, with that said, if you found this helpful, I would appreciate it if you could go ahead and give this channel a like and a subscribe. 
um, so you can be notified of any new videos that I release in the future. Thank you.